Oh, Mother Superior, I have a present for you. Actually, thanks to the folks over at Scream Factory, the present is ours. We're finally getting ourselves Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2 on Collector's Blu-ray. Uh, this is already in stores. It was released to stores December 11, 2018. And we're going to be having a look at this in this video review at Christmas time. This is one of my all-time favorites. I can't even express that enough. This is one of my all-time favorite Christmas classics. This gets watched every single year. I had to kind of stop myself for saying that. That's not 100% true. Leading up to my explanation as to why I don't watch necessarily this every single year, let's look at the timeline of events leading up to this point. For the longest time, Silent Night, Deadly Night has been available in multiple releases. This is one of the earliest releases. There actually was a release prior to this as well. Uh, but it has gotten several releases over the years. We also got ourselves the Silent Night, Deadly, Deadly Night 30th Anniversary Edition before finally Shout Factory slash Scream Factory offered up a delectable, delicious gift that we could put under the tree, the Silent Night, Deadly Night, the original release, on Collector's Blu-ray. Unfortunately, though, when it came to the sequel, the much more entertaining sequel, in my personal opinion, the only way that you could watch it was a Silent Night, Deadly Night, Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2 double feature DVD. Ah, uh, yes, this DVD has gone with me on many journeys from move to move, from house to house. Every single year, this will make an appearance. And so much so, the fact that this was the only way that we could get Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2, it entertained the idea, at least in my head, of picking up a second one of these just in case something happened to it. Silent Night, Deadly Night... Part 2 was released on in uh, on VHS format on its own, but the only way that you could get it was on this copy. The same could actually be said for Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 3, Better Watch Out, The Initiation, and Toy Maker, respectively 3, 4, and 5. I hope one day maybe Scream Factory will eventually give us a release of these three films in a deluxe copy. But there was also, of course, the Silent Night, Deadly Night, Silent Night, that kind of just <laughs> axed the Deadly Night portion. There was a Silent Night reboot. But that is, in a nutshell, my collection days of getting the Silent Night, Deadly Nights. Funny enough, funny enough story, and I'll make it really, really quick. The initial Silent Night, Deadly Night on VHS, I actually asked for Christmas from my parents, not even knowing the gruesomeness of Silent Night, Deadly Night until I actually popped it into the VHS player downstairs after opening it up and watching it Christmas Day. That was my very first memory of Silent Night, Deadly Night many, many, many years ago. So anyways, we'll just move those out of the way because that's not really what we're talking about. We're talking about Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, an all-time favorite of mine. And one thing, though, the reasoning why I say it's not something I watch every single year is because if anybody has watched the first one, and the second one, you'll know something very obviously about the second one is it plays pretty much three quarters of the footage from the first Silent Night, Deadly Night. So often at times when it comes to my choice of movie for the annual holiday horror season, usually I'll pick one or the other. Silent Night, Deadly Night, of course, the original one is a classic. And the fact that it does have some additional foot footage in it that doesn't make its way into part two Often at times I'll go to the original because it's the classic, but my enjoyment level skyrockets every time I watch Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2 because of Ricky Caldwell. Unfortunately, though, again, it's not something a case where I usually watch both films every single year. There has been a couple of years where I've watched the first one and then the following night I've watched the second one, but I do get that sense of deja vu. Anyone else watching that movie will also get the sense of deja vu. So, talking about Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2, and my apologies well in advance for the fact that I probably will say that title frequently over the course of this video. Uh, finally, we're getting ourselves a Collector's Edition Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2 on Collector's Blu-ray. And just to show you what it looks like side by side with the first one, both feature brand new artwork exclusive to the slip sleeve and the internal insert provided from the folks over at Scream Factory. Now, what I often like to do, if you are faithful followers of this channel, thank you for doing that, by the way. Often at times when it comes to the insert, 
the inserts are double layered. In other words, dual layer on the inside is the older cover. So I usually will put the older cover on the inside sleeve. And then the outer sleeve, of course, will feature the brand new artwork. Silent Night, Deadly Night 2 is no exception. Here on the front, we have Ricky breaking through the house of Mother Superior. Ironically enough, you've got 666 as the number of her door. It says the nightmare is about to begin again. Now, obviously, before we get to the whole read-up and explanation of the movie, I want to open up the insert and open up the case, pull out the insert, and just show you the dual sides. On the one side, this is the brand new artwork. On the other side is the cover artwork that was featured on not only the dual feature pack DVD release of many years prior, but also it was the cover that was on the VHS. So if you had picked up the VHS, this is what it would have looked like as well. I love the cover. Even though it technically doesn't really make much sense, I don't really never could understand what's going on here. And I guess it was Ricky, but I mean, I don't... First thing I don't tend to think of for Ricky was ever really a gun. Even though that's what they put on the bulb there. Anyways, so usually what I'll do is I'll put the sleeve insert in the case, like that, the, of the older variety, and then I'll put that inside the new sleeve. By the way... The insert also has the cover artwork, the brand new cover artwork right there on the Blu-ray itself. We'll slide that back into the sleeve here and we'll read off the back here. It's garbage day. Somebody's like, garbage day. I, I, I don't understand. You will understand. Ricky is being released from a mental hospital. It takes, uh, takes him with a terrifying memory of his brother Billy's death and the memory of Mother Superior who brought his mother's demise, or brother's demise. For Ricky, starting a new life means avenging his brother's death, which sets him on a blind journey of relentless revenge, leading ultimately to Mother Superior. And when he gets to her, not even her faith will be enough to stop Ricky as he follows in the family tradition of Christmas carnage. Unfortunately, the as you can see here on the back, it does really give away a lot of the movie. We kind of already know Ricky's journey. The movie actually plays out with Ricky being in a mental hospital and his final days before I believe he's getting the death sentence. He talks to a psychiatrist and it's through the psychiatrist that he's able to retell the events of Silent Night, Deadly Night 1. Cue all of the footage used from the original film. Um, it's a good way to kind of get both the films in one pack in the sense that I can really watch the second one and I'm getting really the first and the second all kind of packed together. It just doesn't have as much the footage as the first one. It does beg the question, however, when Ricky is telling the psychiatrist stories and the events leading up to Billy's demise, if you will, how he's able to retell stories while he was still young and at the orphanage, and yet still Ricky is able to play out very cleanly and clearly play out all the footage of all the events in the initial film. It's one of those things you just sort of have to overlook. Uh, this is a fantastic movie, and really what makes it so fantastic is the acting chops of one actor, Eric Freeman, who hadn't really done a whole lot. If you kind of look at his acting credentials on IMDb, you'll see he sort of was just a stand-in for a lot of things. He was in Married with Children, for example, but he was kind of in the background. I think he was also in, in Living Color, again, in the background. The real reasoning why he was picked for the role was his size, his stature. A very muscular fellow, unfortunately his acting couldn't measure up to it, but it still made for a fantastic viewing, um, especially for the fact that every time he talked, and you'll see this when you watch the movie, his eyebrows will lift. All the time. It is absolutely absurd and so enjoyable. In fact, the only thing that as a takeaway, and every, t any, every single year that I do watch it, when I watch it, the one thing that I kind of wish this movie could have had was the original actress that portrayed Mother Superior. Lillian Chauvin, I believe was her name, played Mother Superior in the very first Silent Night, Deadly Night, for whatever reason, what it was, maybe she just didn't want to come back for the sequel, or they just couldn't pay her. Uh, unfortunately, she wasn't able to come back. I think Gene Miller... I believe Gene Miller was the one that had come back or had portrayed, it doesn't list it here on the back, I think it was Gene Miller who played Mother Superior in the sequel. They sort of had to tell her, say that she had battled uh, cancer and she had kind of a scarring on the side of her face just to distort for the fact that it wasn't the same actress that played her. 
This, unfortunately, is the one thing, the one disappointment to the sequel, is I kind of wish that it would have had the initial actress, but is it is what it certainly is. All right, so let's, if you look at the two side by side, here are the things that come included with Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. You could almost even hold your breath. A widescreen presentation, audio commentary, and writer with writer-director Lee Har uh, Harry. Uh, writer Joseph H. Earl and actor James Newman, theatrical trailer, poster, and still gallery, and DVD ROM of original screenplay. That's all you get, or what you all initially got with the initial outing of Silent Night, Deadly Night in this dual pack. Now, something I can easily retire because, like with other Shout Factory releases, uh, they put a whole ton of stuff on here. Scream Factory gives you a 2K scan of the archival theatrical print. New audio commentary with director, co-writer Lee Harry, and actors Eric Freeman and James Newman. New Sleigh Bells Ring Again, the story of Deadly Night Part 2, featuring interviews with co-writer, director Lee Harry, actors Eric Freeman, James Newman, Elizabeth Caden, uh, Daryl uh, Kylebo, and, uh, and Kenny McCobb, and makeup effects artist... Uh, Christopher Biggs. There's also the new Garbage Days Are Here Again, a look at the film's locations, a new Ricky Today short film featuring a 2018 interview with Ricky Caldwell, new I Don't Sleep, an extended interview with makeup effects artist Christopher Biggs, audio commentary with Lee Harry co-writer Joseph H. Uh, Earl and James Newman, and the theatrical trailer. So there's a whole lot happening in the new release of Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. Picture quality, as you could probably guess it. Scream Factory now using 2K scans of the original archival theatrical print. They're clean and they're crisp. And one thing I do like is that because they used the, uh, the archival theatrical print, you're getting almost the depth and the richness of the original production uh, footage that they actually used. Um, the fact also that you get all these extra bonuses. Look, I mean, if you look at just the chunk of DVD space, the sleeve space that is being utilized and, and just shared for solely all the special features. There's a lot happening right here. The movie was released in 1987 with a runtime of 88 minutes, which only really about 15, 20 minutes was used for the new movie. The rest of it was pretty much archival footage from the original movie. So again, it's sort of the reasoning why I only watch usually one or the other uh, each year, sometimes every single year. I may alternate. One year I may watch Silent Night, Deadly Night, and then one year I'll watch Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2. The benefits of watching the second one, say over the first one, is that you really get all of kind of the summarizing of the first one using archival footage. They're basically just taking exact footage from the original movie and they're using it for the second one. Plus the second one has Eric Freeman, and you can't beat Eric Freeman. Like I said, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2 is now released in store shelves, or on store shelves, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself. If you've ever watched Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2, let me know some of your favorite quotes and scenes from the film. Also, if you did get your chance to grab a hold of this, there was a deluxe rele release of the Silent Night, Deadly Night film that also included the NECA Toys version of Ricky Caldwell in the retro cloth form. Now, I've pre-ordered that, and I hope that it does arrive before the end of the holiday season. At the very least, I'd certainly like to have a look at the retro cloth Ricky Caldwell uh, in a uh, Christmas spot before Christmas comes around. So if it does happen, you'll see it happen on this channel. If you guys want to go back and have a look also at some of my other Christmas videos for this holiday season, there's a whole playlist called Christmas Spots. Certainly also more holiday festive gifts will be under this guy's tree as we have a look at upcoming things and titles uh, leading up to the Christmas, the end of the Christmas season. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching as you always do, guys. And I'll see you next time.